start recording so, now. So now I, I've started recording. Yeah, I see the sign. Okay, great. So, and I'll start sharing my screen. So there's the screen sharing, and then I'll get rid of some stuff. Let's see. That can go away. That can go away. So what I want to talk about is connecting the desktop and the cloud. And uh, you, Mikako, suggested that we could show it at the AEC booth. So I think what I'll do is both demo a little bit what I put together so far and also describe how to install it so we can set it up for the booth. Does anybody who is do we get machines at the AEC booth or do we use our own laptops? Good question. Um, according to Steve, we have to bring our own computer. Aha, uh -huh. okay. Some, but somebody yesterday um, yeah, Brian was telling me that he has another duty in the uh, manufacturing side. There, they will bring one computer. So I think we have to prepare in both ways. Okay. Yeah, but uh, later, we, we can talk about it afterwards. Let's focus on presentation. Yes. Okay. First. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, so my presentation here has three different parts. and. Well, yeah, three, four actually. And I recently, here's the room editor application that is a starting point right now. I just added an installation section to it that we can um, refer to, and I'll add that to the other applications that I'll talk about in a moment too. Here's a summary, a link to a recent blog post, summary and overview description that I wrote after presenting this material at the Revit Technology Conference. So it's about connecting connecting the desktop and the cloud. There's the title up there. And I just updated the room editor for Revit 2016 to show it again. So the four things that I presented at that conference, four different examples, were this old 2D cloud-based round-trip room editor that was implemented in uh, 2013. And I like it so much that I show it again now, and it still is interesting for people because they don't know what you can do. Then there's the fire rating in the cloud, which is based on the very old and well-known Revit SDK sample named fire rating it's just a modification to run it for multiple projects and store the data in a cloud database instead of storing the information in just a local excel spreadsheet for one single project then this is the project that i'm working on currently i don't know whether we want to show that the compound project at the aec booth i think these two are more mature and the nice thing about the fire rating of the cloud project is that it is extremely simple and still it shows a lot of power so these two together really should convince anybody who is sort of working on desktop products and wondering why should i even look at the cloud what will that bring me so here's the message and takeaway that all of this is pretty easy and um, worthwhile and give you some powerful new functionality. And then we'll start looking at this cloud-based room uh, editor. So it consists of two parts. One is obviously a Revit add-in, and that is uh, basically simple and Basically, both parts are simple and small, and this Revit add-in communicates with a database. And the database is a NoSQL database, web-based. In this case, it's CouchDB. And this CouchDB database includes its own web server. It's built by Apache. 
it's completely open source and uh, yeah being apache it has a web server built into it and what this revit add-in does is it exports the outline of a room and the outline of family instances contained in that room to the database and stores the two-dimensional plan view in SVG, Scalable Vector Graphics. And then in the browser or on a mobile device, even on a telephone, you can edit the location of these objects and update the BIM, the building information model, the Revit database. And there's two options for the update. One is manual, where you click a button and then that pulls the database and keeps track of the changes and updates whatever was modified. Or you can subscribe to the changes and then you get automatic updates all the time, as long as the add-in is running. So I'll jump over to Windows and we can look at that running. So here's a really simple model, a stupid model. And the add-in, this add-in has its own... Jeremy. Yes? Hello. Hello. I think you are not sharing your screen. Oh, really? Okay. I can see it. It does... I only see, I only see the web. I, I mean, uh, the browser. You are showing your... Uh, well, the I desktop, right? Grab it right now. Oh, so, interesting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I see your Windows 7 and the, the room model and all that. Yes, okay, yeah, I can. Yeah. I see the same. Well, I hope it's recording it. what you guys see. Yeah. <laughs> I can switch see, Windows. I, only see the <clears throat> I can switch Windows to a full screen view. No, I, st I still see a browser only. Well yeah, then, keep seeing Revit. Uh, now I see it. Okay, good. So in Revit, this is Revit. Uh, we can go to the Add-ins tab, and once the Room Editor app has been installed, it installs this external application and its own little panel, the Room Editor panel, with uh, four commands. <coughs> Upload all rooms, takes all of the rooms in the model and uploads them to the database. If I upload a specific room, I can select what room to upload. Then there's update furniture, which pulls back the changes from the cloud database. And there's this subscription, which um, automatically updates whenever something is changed. So we'll start by uploading a specific room and I'll for demonstration, I'll pick the simplest one. So this room just has one single family instance in it. And I'll say finish. There's a preview being generated, which shows exactly what 2D geometry I'm exporting. This lump here in the middle is just a hole in the room, just to show that those holes are handled in SVG. And this is the family instance. It's a desk. And we have a sequence number which tells us at what point is the web database in its updates and changes from now on will be applied. So now that information has gone to the database and I can currently I'm running it locally here on the local host, but I could um, run it on a, I would normally for a demo run it on a, web hosted database and the source code has this is visual studio i'm in the debugger something has been uh gone strange about this i don't know why um so what where was i ah yes in the source code i can also specify whether I want to run this locally or globally. So if I simply search for local, that takes me to a Boolean variable. 
use local database is currently true. If I'm on local, I use local host. If I'm on global, I use my JT space within the Irish Iris Coach CouchDB hosting website. Okay, so let's continue with the demo. I'll say refresh this room. This is the current state of the room. And then I can say move this or rotate it. I'm just dragging to move and I'm clicking this rotate button to rotate it. And if I say save, then that information is stored back into the web database. Nothing has changed yet in Revit because I'm not subscribing to changes. But if I say update furniture, then the furniture updates and you can see this furniture instance in the new location here. Okay. And now the next step, the more interesting one is subscribe to changes. Now, if I go to the web database, which is the user interface here is really, really stupid and simplistic because I'm not a web expert. Now I can move this, rotate it some more and keep Revit open and say save. Jump, and you see the I just clicked save in the browser, which is a remote, can be remote, can be anywhere in the world, and the BIM model is updated. That's it. That's the room editor. Um, now we'll switch to the next sample, which is much simpler. The fire rating in the cloud. So Everybody who works with Revit API probably knows the fire rating SDK sample. It implements three commands. It creates a shared parameter named fire rating, and the fire rating parameter just holds a double value specifying the fire rating of a door family instance, of all door family instances. Then there's an export command to export these values to an Excel spreadsheet and another command to import the modified values back into the project. And Mikako, can you see the browser? Yes, I'm seeing the browser now. Okay. I mean the build encoder. Yes, exactly. And now the, the cloud variation of this adds one single little enhancement. It stores the data from multiple projects in one cloud-hosted database. Again, it consists of two components. So I have the Revit add-in, which exports the data, and the web server. And in this case, the web server is not CouchDB, but it uses a MongoDB database. And the MongoDB database is a web database. It does not include its own web server. So I use a Node.js web server. It implements a REST API, and then it drives the Mongo database. So now let's switch back to Windows and look at that. So I'll actually terminate the debugging session and switch to a different project to show that. So this... Yeah, let me add... Ah, yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, so this is fire rating in the cloud. Let's see, where can I find that? Open project. Uh, Jeremy, I, I, I still see the browser again. Yeah, well, I hope the recording is reacting a bit faster than your update. Does anybody else see mm -hmm. the... Visual Studio? Yeah, I, I see Visual Studio. I see actually whenever you're, like, I see it like real time to whatever you're doing. Okay, great, thank you. So there's something strange with your updates, Mikako. Okay, I see it now. So here's the fire rating in the cloud sample. And this is also on GitHub, obviously, so you simply install it like any other Revit add in. Um, you fork the directory, clone it to your local system, compile and install the add-in. 
So I'll um, simply start this up. And as I said, this one is, is even simpler. It's got these three commands, create and bind shared parameter, export shared parameter values, import shared parameter values. Um, so here we are in Revit. Here's a simple house. And the commands here are just normal external commands. So there's no dedicated external application that implements an own user interface for them. They just show up here under the external tools. And as said, we'll store, create and store a fire rating value on the door. So here's the single door that we have. And if we look at its properties, you can see under other, I'll toggle away everything else. Under other, you can see so far there's just the head height. Now we'll do step number one, which creates and binds the shared parameter. Check. Here's the fire rating value. It's so far it's undefined, which is fine by us. Now we'll say export this information to the cloud. And this uh, add-in is currently set up to um, work with a web-hosted database. So if we go to the export command, you'll see it's very, very simple. I have the shared parameter GUID to identify where the data should come from. I have a project identifier which um, specifies what project does this door live in. I use a filtered element collector to collect all the door instances. For each door, uh, that's the element here, I use a door data helper class to grab the fire rating value from that door. I store it in this door data class, and I say util put, to my database collection doors, the unique ID of this door element, that's what I use to identify it in the database, and the door data. And that's it, finished, end of command. So you can also look at what does the door data class do to store, extract and store this information. It's very, very little. So I pass in the element and the project identifier I um, store that stuff into the local variables and I pass that into the um, uh, database. And then look, let's look at the, how do I get back there again? Uh, and then we want to look at how do we actually poke, put that into the database, the REST API call. So there's the put function, and it says new REST client, new REST request. I have the API version encoded on top of the base URL. I use the collection name, which is doors. I use the method put. Request format is JSON. Add the body, which is the door data. This automatically, this is using the REST Sharp library, and the REST Sharp library automatically grabs all the public fields from the door data, encodes them to JSON, sends, puts it into the request, then exec I execute the request, I get back the result. So you can see this is like 20 lines of code to, to connect to the database and send the data across. Let's go and look where is that database. So I have the um, again here the second component of this is the web server, which is called Fire Rating DB, and it lives in the um, in Heroku. It's hosted on Heroku. So if I go to Heroku. I think it remembers who I am and logs me in. 
and you can see my various um, Heroku instances up and running. Here's the fire rating database. And um, I deploy it automatically from GitHub. So it's all very, very simple to set up. It's simply deployed from the master branch of the Heroku fire rating uh, repository. And this is a node server. And it talks with the web database. So let's go look at the source code for that. I think that will take me there. So this is the entire code for that. Um, I have the server.js. I have some routes to set up. I have the model and the controller. These define what the database looks like. So if I go to the model directory and we look at the door JS definition, this is the definition of the door instance in Mongo. And you can see these, these fields that I had in the Revit C sharp add in door data container, they are uh, reflected here exactly in the schema for the MongoDB database. And the, so on and so forth. Um, if we look at the server implementation, um, yeah, it's a normal server. And here again, I have a switch between a local database or uh, um, the web hosted one. So for the local one, I just use MongoDB at localhost. For the web hosted one, I use this. So let's go and look at that in the browser. So I'm going to my web hosted, Mongo lab hosted, web hosted database browser. Oops, that went to the wrong place. I'll just say Mongo lab. Okay, this also logs me in automatically, I would have thought. So everybody who wants to demo this needs to create a MongoLab um, user. But once they have the user, they can uh, take a look at this database because the database user and the database password, they are different from your MongoLab user and password. They are public and they are both equal to compound. So... Um, in this database, we have currently 1,571 documents, which is a bit unfortunate. Instances. Ah, this is the compound database. Sorry, this is not the one I wanted to look at. I wanted to look at the fire rating database. So let's go to fire rating. Uh, both the Heroku and the Mongo lab. Oops. What's the exclamation mark here? Error timed out. Contact support. Oh dear. Fire rating? Ah, now it hasn't timed out. So, oh, good. That was, it was a bit slow, but it worked. So we have the door data for this one instance that we sent up we have the project id identifying where it came from the revit unique id that i use as an index into the database and the fire rating value which in revit was undefined here it's reflected as zero let's edit this in the web database and say we want this to be 100 12,340. Save and go back. So we changed it. And now if I go back to Revit and go into Revit, we still have the door here with an undefined fire rating value. Now if I go to step number three, import, click, there's the updated value from the web database. So that's basically the entire demo. That's all I want to show. And now uh, 
the next steps would be to discuss how to get this set up on the machines for the AEC booth. Okay, do you have any questions? Uh, okay, so um, <clears throat> any questions before we talk about this? So you said that we only need the Mongo Lab account. Do we need any other one or just that one? Uh, as long as you are not interested in exploring the CouchDB database, I, I can set up the CouchDB database to be local. Maybe that's easiest. It's a bit quicker than if it's um, hosted, hosted on Iris Couch. That makes things a bit slower. So yeah. I would set up the and and in that case, if we want to run it locally, I have to set up CouchDB and the um, room editor CouchDB app locally as well. Okay, I can do that or somebody I'm else. Interested in exploring it, but I guess for AU, it's fine if we just do it locally for now. Yeah, like later on, we can. But right now, like. Yeah. due to time and all that stuff for preparation, I think it's just better to keep it like that. Yeah, yeah. And I think on the machine, we should have Visual Studio. Mm -hmm. We should have Revit. We should yes, have we CouchDB. We should have Node. And we should have Mongo in case we want to run the fire rating sample locally as well. And I would set up the room editor to run uh, locally with CouchDB. Okay. And the fire rating sample to run uh, on the web by default if the connection is okay. And if it's not okay, then we can switch to the local system instead. And that's also just one single switch in the uh, C-sharp source code. Yes. So it should be perfectly okay to even, if somebody is interested in it, we can switch back and forth uh, at runtime, you know, and or not runtime exactly, but switch back and forth, recompile and restart, and it's uh, visible inside of minutes. Okay. I, just for completeness sake, so I'm working on this compound component tracker. That's also a Mongo database and a web server driven by REST API. It's a Revit add-in, putting the data up there. And it does a little bit more um, because it also provides viewing. If, if anybody wants to explore that, uh, there's a... There's the GitHub page, and there's a link here to try it out live. So this is the interesting one that I'm still working on. I haven't done anything now for uh, uh, several weeks, though, because of basically handling too many cases. <laughs> so this has a bunch of family instances in it, and here's at the bottom is the viewer. At, in the middle is some... Family instance data, if I click on an instance, the family instance is activated and the viewer brings up the model that this uh, instance lives in. And what I want to add next is a button here which says isolate and then it would jump to that instance inside of the model and highlight that. And the final step that I did um, in the in that presentation was to show a bit more of the view and data API. And basically all I did was use this um, dotty animated 3D assembly instructions. I really like that sample and it is people, pretty cool. that is really cool. People loved it. Yeah. So with these things, these four examples all in conjunction, I don't think anybody left the room that wasn't either already doing cloud-based stuff or said, wow, I really need to get into this. And that even included some Revit developers. There was a guy called Tamas Badic from the Revit development team and Peter Boyer. And mm -hmm. um, they were not aware of how simple this could be. And they got ideas of what kind of cloud-based stuff they would like to build into Revit to manage, for instance, 
shared parameter definitions are sort of messy and people have these stupid text files or even built-in parameter definitions. They thought, how about having all built-in parameters that exist in the entire universe defined in one single repository? So things like that. So it gave them ideas as well. That was really cool. Okay, that, that rounds off the entire presentation. Uh, now we can okay. go back to thank you very much. Yeah, thank you very much. So uh, then, so you suggest uh, two, right? Uh, maybe <coughs> the last two, last two out of four, we will we'll leave it. But first, to fire rating and then uh, room, uh, the furniture layout. Yes, yes. So we'll include that. Okay. So um, the logistics, we have Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Tuesday, Wednesday, we have 12 to 3 and 6 to 9, and Thursday, 11.30 to 3. So, uh, so Jeremy, could you, at this point, I know Jaime has name everywhere, but uh, you know, I think it will be easier for everybody if you will be available whenever you are free. I know yes. you have a class as well. So what I will do is uh, I'll make a list to make sure you know two of you or us are always there, and also we need to pull in Augusto for IE, so everybody knows who is available, what kind of things, and especially uh, the IE. I don't know the IW actually, the InfraWorks. I'm not sure if uh, Augusto want us to be prepared for something. I will double check with him. So just to be aware, the, at this point, Jeremy, can you quickly tell when you have a class? Yes, it's or at you five. Look at your time? It's at five huh? o'clock. Five o'clock in the afternoon. In Tuesday. Yes. And how about others? Everything is five o'clock. I think you have a panel on Tuesday five. Uh. E I know because I'm part of it. Aha, uh -huh, okay. Yes, in that case I do. Let's and see. then there is a... It's, how about this this class about this crowd connections? Is it Wednesday or something? Um, yeah, I guess so. Maybe from 8 to 9.30? I know, that's a lab. Okay. No, it's, it's probably on Thursday, uh, 10 to 11.30. Okay, that's perfect then, because uh, this Class is from 11.30. Ah, yeah. Okay. okay, so then let's make sure you will be there. So, uh, and then we'll make an arrangement. I know that uh, we can't be there whole time. For instance, I have to go to a meeting on Thursday, the management meeting. Uh, yeah. But uh, Wednesday, I should be available, I think. Okay, great. Thank you. So then, Jeremy, could you put uh, everything ready and then send it to us? Um, yes, absolutely. Yes, okay. yes. The the okay. samples are all ready and they're all on GitHub. So there's uh, okay. nothing that I need to package especially. I just need to tell you where to go and I want to f improve the GitHub documentation to make the installation absolutely clear. I did... Okay one so far which is um, the room editor maybe you can have a quick mm -hmm. look at it and check whether um, whether it actually does explain what you need let's see how do i mm -hmm. oh, there I, I, I'll, I'll put the link here mm -hmm. and you can click on this link and read mm -hmm. that installation instruction and see whether it tells you absolutely everything you need to know if it does then I'll add that to the other repositories as well, and then it should be all clear, not just for us, but for the entire universe. Okay, so I'll make a copy. Okay, so let's do that. And uh, I think at least we have to check who's minimum. So Adam, you are sitting there. Are you going to help us too? 
Um, no, I don't think so. I was just interested in seeing what other teams are presenting. Okay, okay, so curiosity. All right. Yeah, yeah because okay, I have to do the MFG, I'm doing the A360. Uh, already. I, I know that why. <laughs> But I also know you are you you are all round the prayer too, so I just okay, great, thank you very much then uh then uh, let's follow up with the timing to make sure who's who is available where so at least that we know, and then if something fails and we need to have a or somebody ask a very detailed question, then we can. We can be sure that when Jeremy is available, and then tell them like come back when Jeremy is around or something like that. So. Okay, great. Thank you very much once again, Jeremy. This is exciting. Yes, I think so too. Thank you very much. Thank you. Then bye I'll bye. turn off the recording now. Okay. Bye bye. Yes.